I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to look at parameters and how to do parameterized queries against our Snowflake database. Now, of course, as many of you may know, uh, parameterized queries are very important because they sort of guard against uh, SQL injection attacks, and that's what we'd like to do here as well. So without further ado, let's get to our parameterized queries in Snowflake. Okay, so what we're going to do today is uh, start a new file, and I'm just using the uh, idle shell here uh, with the default install of Python with uh, the uh, the libraries that you need for connecting to Snowflake and uh, watch my earlier episodes for that. If you do install the uh, Python connector, make sure you install the one that is for pandas. And I've, uh, I've uh, put some details for that uh, in an earlier episode, which I'll note up above here. So uh, what we'll do is we'll import our Snowflake connector and our pandas, and then we'll say uh, we're opening and uh, we're going to open up the uh, Snowflake database here. So the first thing you need to do when you're going to use parameters with uh, your Snowflake connector is make sure that you set your parameter style um, and you have to do it before you open your connection. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to set our parameter style equal to QMark which is for question mark and uh, that's going to uh, allow us to use the question mark as a real parameter uh, as opposed to, say, trying to use, um, you know, the Python, uh, you know, percentage uh, D or percentage S, uh, which those are, um, those might be subject to SQL injection attacks, so we do not want to use those. Uh, we want to use our QMark, and, and uh, there's a second one called Numeric, which I'll also uh, show in today's lesson. So uh, what I've done here is I'm just pasting in, I'm creating the connection, I'm just pasting in some information from a uh, uh, connection string that I had before. And uh, so very nice to, uh, to look at your warehouse and database and schema. If you specify those during the connection setup, it makes things a lot easier when you're working specifically on one database. You don't have to uh, call the use commands and things like that to uh, use a particular database. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll say our cursor, CS is equal to connection.cursor. And then I, my SQL, I've got a little project tasks uh, table in there, uh, in that database. And so I'm going to say SQL uh, is uh, select star from project tasks. And then we're going to go uh, CS.execute SQL. And then we'll do uh, D, uh, our data frame is equal to uh, cs.fetchpandasall, which is a nice command that we have uh, that comes from the pandas version of the connector, so make sure you get that one. And, uh, and then we'll close our cursor, close our connection, uh, we've, uh, and then we'll print our data frame head there. And this is our SQL string here. We're going to execute it. And uh, I missed something, so, oh, there we go. I missed uh, equal sign in our... Uh, SQL string there, is, and uh, so I'll put that in and hit F5, and away we go. So uh, our table looks kind of like this. Um, it's got a few fields in it. It's got a task type but with status and action and suggestion in it. Very simple table. Uh, but what if we wanted to say, you know, get a particular task type as a, you know, as a parameter? So if we were to do it without any parameters we could just type it in and hard code it and this is what it would look like if we did that and as you can see that's nice and easy you could do that but if you were to you know change that you know uh, using dynamic SQL that would be or leave your you know application open to uh, SQL injection uh, so we want to replace that with a parameter and uh, we're going to put a question mark in for our parameter because we used our Q mark up above there as our style. And so um, that's actually very handy for us. So we can put a parameter in, um, in the task type. And so if you had multiple parameters, you just need to make sure that you're, you put them all in, in the same order. So in this case, we have our uh, 
action parameter in there. And if I hit F5, you'll see that it works very nicely uh, with the question mark uh, parameter and uh, putting action in there. And uh, that, that is exactly what we want to see uh, when we specify action as our uh, parameter. Now we could put in suggestion or you could have a variable you could put in there. Um, and uh, that would be very handy. Also, if you're looping through records and you need to do something for each record, uh, then this is quite handy because you can, you can pass the, the uh, list or a custom uh, list or a row in your data frame. Uh, so that's a very handy way that you can do that. Uh, so what if we wanted to add more parameters? Well, we can do that. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, add a little bit of uh, uh, formatting to our string here so that we can uh, you know, put it onto multiple lines so it's a little bit easier to read. And, uh, and we can do that uh, by adding the uh, brackets around it. And uh, we'll add another one. So we'll say, well, what if the, you know, we wanted the task ID or some date or whatever less than a certain amount? Uh, then we could do less than and then the question mark and then close off our SQL string. And that's going to give us two parameters. And as you, uh, as you can see, these are not named parameters like in other languages. So we have to put them in the same order uh, that we put them in into the SQL string. And so <clears throat> that's very important that you put it in the right order. So 15 is that second one. And the first one, suggestion is the uh, that's the first one and uh, I got to move my bracket out there so that now we've got our list in the right order and now I can uh, hit F5 there and we should only see two rows coming out and that's exactly what we want to see we got suggestions uh, where it's a suggestion and where the task ID is less than 15 and also keep in mind you can use these same techniques for insert statements or delete statements or or update statements um, it's exactly the same as, uh, kind of the same as what we're doing here. So what if we wanted to change and use a different style? So there's two different styles of parameters, and the first one is the QMark style, and the second one's called numeric. And what we're going to do is, if we specify that style, then we're going to put our, uh, we'll put our parameters in order, and we can number them, uh, which can be very handy um, for, uh, you know, so that if you have a lot of parameters, then you can sort of put an index on them. Um, some SQL statements can get just crazy numbers of parameters. So that might be nice for that. And just as we did before, uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and uh, we can hit F5. And you can see it acts exactly the same way. So <clears throat> all we have to do is pass in the parameters in the same order, just like we did before. And we can run the same... Uh, query again and uh, it is useful to note that uh, performance will be better uh, the more consecutive times that you run this um, and that's uh, that's very very handy for when you're using parameterized queries and that is how you do parameterized queries on snowflake with python hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do uh, parameterized queries with python on snowflake if you like what you saw today please give the video a thumbs up Make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and you know, click the bell when you see the bell. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.